This is an RX 580, and it was cheap. I bought it off AliExpress for $70, brand new, shipped to my door. Is this actually a crazy good deal on a great GPU, or did I just get totally scammed? Oh god, please tell me I didn't get scammed again. Hello, hi, I'm TechTweeb, welcome, thanks for clicking on the video today. AliExpress is an interesting place to shop. And by interesting, I mean weird and confusing, sometimes amazing, and sometimes scammy. Usually buying stuff from AliExpress works out great, but I've bought many things that seemed legit and turned out not to be. Like those fake GTX 1050 Ti's that were floating around a few years ago. I fell for that scam, I'm not ashamed to say. Either that, or my order doesn't arrive at all. Like they just freaking steal my money and don't send anything. The old saying of, if it's too good to be true, it probably is, as my mom would say, c comes to mind every time I shop there. So when I saw this RX 580 8GB model for sale, uh, brand new, for $72, I was skeptical to say the least. Uh, what's the catch? Is it even going to work? Is it, is it just another fake GTS 450 dressed up in a new plastic shroud? Will it install the drivers? Is it a virus? Just a big plastic virus that I'll plug into my PC and immediately lose my life savings stored in bitcoins on the root level of my C drive? Surely you can't just buy a brand new RX 580 8GB for $72. Well, you kinda can, but there's a catch. I'll tell you about that in a minute, but first let's unbox this bad boy and see what we get in the package. The box itself is, well, let's just say that the box doesn't fill me with a ton of confidence that I didn't just get totally scammed. Starting with the brand name, Graphics Player. Um, have you ever heard of Graphics Player? They, they make GPUs, apparently. And the product is Graphics Card PCIe Express. What graphics card? Eh, who knows? And it gets even more useless around the back. System requirements. PCIe 1.0 to 3.0 specification with at least one graphics card slot. They put that in caps so, they, so you know it's important. So if you have zero graphics card slots, you, you can't use this graphics card. That, that, that's good to know. At least one gigabyte of system RAM and the power supply must be greater than the calculated power of TED device. What is the calculated power of TED device? Well, they, they, they don't say, so that's not important, I guess, as long as your power supply is greater than it. So if the box itself doesn't fill you with confidence, maybe what's inside the box will. Inside we have a, a paintbrush. I'm not making a joke here. This was actually in the box with the GPU. And it's not just a mistake of on mine or anything. I looked at some of the photos from uh, other customers on AliExpress, and they also got paintbrushes. What is the paintbrush for? If I use my imagination, I could maybe see this being useful for cleaning the GPU. Maybe that's why they toss it in. But I'm an artist, if you haven't heard. So I'm actually going to use it to paint, I think. Oh, hey, maybe I could make an entire video making a painting with this brush. And I could paint a GPU. Oh. <laughs> Oh man, this Primo YouTube content just makes itself, I'm telling you. Also in the box, we get a Molex to 6-pin PCIe power adapter, which will definitely not catch fire and burn your house down. You have graphics player's guarantee on that, and a few screws, and an installation CD. ATI Radeon Premium Graphics Installation CD for our ATI graphics card. Oh, that's definitely super useful. And on to the GPU itself. It's, you know, th this is pretty nice. I love GPUs. Not just because of their guts and their performance, but I actually love the design of GPUs. You've heard me gush about good GPUs and hate on ugly ones many times on the channel. And th there's lots they've done right here for a budget GPU. We have a black PCB, a, pr a pretty thick chalky fin stack, two copper heat pipes, one single six pin PCIe power connector, and a dual fan shroud that actually looks really great in my opinion. Like it's not gaudy or cheesy at all. No dumb colors to clash with your build. It's simple with a few nice aesthetic touches. Look, it looks a lot better than many GPUs I've seen from way bigger companies. This would look pretty nice in a build I think. Not bad, right? Speaking of which, our test setup today is this PC that I built sort of recently. It's like a moderately priced budget gaming PC with an i5, 10400, and 16 gigabytes of 3200 megal flirps RAM. I'll link to the video where I build this in the description below if you want to see the full specs. I think this is a good type of PC for a cheap GPU like this. Something budget but still built smartly with performance in mind. Here it is in GPU-Z, and I installed the latest AMD software and drivers without issue. So before we get to testing, let's talk about what this actually is. The listing on AliExpress doesn't try to hide that this is the 2048 SP version of the RX 580. 
Now, to regular people, they'd look at this listing and think, right, an RX 580 and it's 8 gigabytes for $70. That's pretty good, right? But tech dweebs like you and me know that the 2048 SP version of the RX 580 isn't quite an RX 580. It's a slightly stripped down version of the RX 580, and it was only released in China. I remember seeing a gamer's nexus thing about the, the 2040 SP, and their conclusion was that it's basically a scam to call it an RX 580 when it's not the same as other RX 580s. Sort of like what Nvidia did with the GT 1030 GDDDDR4 version. I personally don't have a problem with that here, because they called it something slightly different. It's the RX 580 2048 SP, so I don't think AMD were trying to be sneaky or anything. It it's just got a number attached to, to the name that tells you something about the version of the GPU, which is how this sort of thing should be done, in my opinion. It's called the 2048 SP because it has 2048 cores. The SP stands for stream processors, by the way. The regular RX 580 has 2304 cores. The RX 570 has 2048 cores, just like this. So it's more similar to an RX 570 in terms of core count, but it's closer to an RX 580 in terms of the clock speed. So it should land some somewhere between an RX 570 and an RX 580, but here's the thing, it doesn't in a good way. So let's get right into some tests so I can just show you what I mean. I have a regular real RX 580, the one I reviewed in this video. Is the, this MSI model. I ran this little benchmark walk through a lice infested crap hole village in The Witcher 3 and on the real regular RX 580 I got an average of 64 FPS. But when I ran the same benchmark on the $70 AliExpress RX 580 2048 SP I got the exact same average FPS. 64 FPS. I ran the test multiple times and got the same results. And the 1% lows are actually better on the cheap AliExpress 2048 SP version of the GPU. 53 FPS 1% lows here versus 40 FPS 1% lows on the MSI RX 580. And I checked some other games too and the performance on this 2048 SP is literally identical to the MSI RX 580. It's actually a bit better on the 2048 SP. I don't have any good explanation for that. It should be a, a few FPS lower than the RX 580, somewhere between an RX 580 and an RX 570. But for my tests, it's performing as an RX 580 should perform. Uh, maybe you'll encounter some games that I didn't test that cause it to suffer a little bit more, but honestly, I, I doubt you'd be able to ever, ever even notice a difference. So that's our comparison between the real version and the cheap version. The rest of the gameplay I'll show you, we'll, we'll be using the RX 580 2048 SP and we'll see what $70 gets you when you buy one of these from AliExpress. So let's start out with The Witcher 3 since we're already here. This is running with the next gen patch update, DX12 API, 1080p resolution with the medium settings, but I treated myself to ultra textures. Since we have eight gigabytes of VRAM, we might as well turn those uh, textures up, right? And I'm making use of the new FSR2 implementation in this game at the quality setting. Actually, it was enabled by default and I didn't even notice for the first bit. So really it's a negligible impact on uh, visual quality. After about 10 minutes of gameplay, I averaged 63 FPS with respectable 48 FPS 1% lows. That's impressive for $70. That's really freaking impressive. This is an older game, but with the next gen uh, update and DX12, it's much nicer looking and way more demanding. And we can play it with great FPS on a $70 GPU. That I was not expecting. And the good news doesn't stop there. I was impressed at the performance across the board. Here in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, my favorite benchmark game, because I get to hang out with my girlfriend, Laura Croft, I was running at 1080p high settings with ultra textures, and I got 60 FPS by the end of my little benchmark gameplay. Now, for an RX 580, this is standard performance. The RX 580 is still a good 1080p high settings GPU. Maybe medium settings on newer games. But I really wasn't expecting this 2048 SP version to keep pace with the regular RX 580. I mean, I, I can't speak for all the 2048 SP GPUs out there. Maybe there are, some are better than others. Or maybe graphics player have done some magic to get it working as good as they did here. But this is pretty freaking impressive for a $70 GPU. Can you name another new GPU that you could buy for $70 that'll give you this level of performance? If you can, uh, please let us know in the comments below, because I don't think I can. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
And here's some Red Dead Redemption 2, the cowboy game, where you could explode horses with dynamite, running at 1080p with the first balance preset, but with ultra textures to take advantage of that 8 gigabytes of VRAM, and I got an average of 58 FPS by the end of my test. I really wasn't sure how this GPU would handle this game, because it's actually quite VRAM intensive when you turn up those textures, but it, it was just great here. This game is super demanding when you crank up those textures for some reason. The, the performance just tanks when you get close to the VRAM limit of your GPU. You, but even with ultra textures, we maxed out at less than 5 gigabytes of VRAM usage. And VRAM usage is going to increase more and more in, in games moving forward. Uh, soon enough, 8 gigabytes will be the bare minimum, even at modest settings. So that alone, the fact that you can get an 8 gigabyte GPU that runs modern games really well for $70 is kind of crazy, right? Let's switch gears, get out our monster energy drinks and our RGB mouses and do an esports game. This is CSGO but I got 1080p with the competitive settings, basically the lowest settings, and I got an average of 270 FPS. I'm not actually playing online here. This is just a bot match. <laughs> Nobody wants me messing up their game with my GPU testing and my general terrible CSGO skills. So can you use this RX 580 2048 SP for high refresh esports gaming? Yeah, totally. You could definitely go for like a 240 hertz monitor with the setup. But as you see by the me the metrics on the screen, we're generally not maxing out the GPU. It's going between like 50 to 90% GPU usage. So I think we could get a bit more out of this GPU if we paired it with a better processor. The 10400 is, is a good processor. It's a good match for this GPU. But when we're talking about very high refresh rate gaming, like 360 hertz gaming, then yeah, you're going to want the best processor that you can get because that's likely what's going to be holding you back. The next game I tested was Assassin's Creed Unity because, well, I, I had it installed, so I figured why not. This game was actually very demanding when it was released. It was terribly optimized and it had a ton of performance issues and graphical glitches, but it's improved a lot over the last few years. I didn't have a PC that could handle this game at the time, even though I really wanted to play it, but I came back to it in recent years and played through the whole game, and I freaking loved it. It's one of my favorite Assassin's Creed games, actually. I love the world. I love the history of the French Revolution. I remember hearing about how much attention they put into the architecture and the look and feel of Paris. And it really shows. If you pay attention to the lore of the world and read the extra stuff, and do some virtual sightseeing, it's actually a bit of a, a history lesson in this game. And the parkour mechanics are, are so solid here, too. Actually, in many ways, this feels more realistic and, and fluid than, than even modern Assassin's Creed games. And the graphics definitely hold up today. I think this looks freaking awesome. I'm running at 1080p high settings with ultra textures, and I got an average of 75 FPS. And like you see, there's a, a ton of stuff going on in this game. Every time you turn a corner, there's like crowds of hundreds of NPCs and puddles with reflection, uh, very detailed buildings. Uh, totally worth playing through this game if you haven't yet, by the way. And it runs amazing here on the AliExpress Special RX 580. <laughs> Moving along to GTA 5, which is basically a required benchmark test in any GPU testing video. And I, I love testing this game because it's just fun. I love causing such dumb destruction in this game. It's usually my favorite part of any GPU test, firing up good old GTA 5. I'm running at 1080p with the high settings, ultra textures of course, and still managed to get 112 FPS on average by the end of my test. The GPU usage was maxed out nearly all the time, but the CPU wasn't super low. It was like 25-50% to 50 usage, so if you really wanted to maximize your FPS, you could lower some of the settings down to find a better CPU versus GPU balance if you wanted a very high refresh rate GTA 5 that is. I play this game single player, I'm not competitive or anything, I just love hanging out with my good buddy Trevor, so I'd probably turn all the settings up to ultra personally, aiming for like 80 or so FPS, and this GPU could definitely hit that. Yeah, 
Here's Horizon Zero Dawn, a game about fighting future dinosaurs made of old used cell phones and Dell e-waste keyboards. Running at 1080p with a medium high settings mix and ultra textures and looking very nice indeed, I got an average of 47 FPS. This game does have built-in FSR, but it's the older FSR 1 upscaling. FSR 1 is okay, but now that we have FSR 2 being implemented in lots of games, I find myself not even bothering with FSR 1 because you, you can definitely notice it when you're playing. This game game is so dang nice looking. It's definitely one of those graphical showcase games. And with ultra textures, it looks freaking amazing. Oh, speaking of which, this is the game that utilized the VRAM on the GPU the most. Over 7 gigabytes of VRAM used. So you definitely wouldn't be able to get this kind of performance on a 4 gigabyte RX 580, for instance. Man, I just keep coming back to that VRAM. 8 gigabytes of VRAM for 70 bucks. It's only GDDDR5 VRAM, so we aren't getting the performance we'd get if it was GDDDR6X VRAM. But even still, being able to max out the textures in every single game we play really makes them look amazing with barely any performance penalty. And of course, we need to test out Fortnite for the kids and babies watching this. Oh, don't cry. I'm just kidding, little guy. I'm at 1080p with mostly high settings, epic view distance, DirectX 12 API, and at these settings, I got 55 FPS on average. And yeah, I, I know most Fortnite players like to put the settings down to the lowest performance mode. And if you did that, you'd get a, way more FPS, but I don't care. This is how I like to play the game. I like the way the game looks at higher settings. As long as I'm getting over 60 FPS, I'm good. I know I didn't get over 60 FPS here. <laughs> I should have lowered a few settings, I guess. Even still, this is a freaking awesome Fortnite experience. Can you name a new GPU that you can buy that'll give you this kind of performance at these settings for 70 bucks? Even if you have to buy it from China and wait a few months for it to arrive, I'm kind of thinking this is the best bang for the buck new GPU that you could get right now. I haven't crunched the numbers, but I bet, I bet it's not far off. And last but not least, we gotta test out Cyberjunk 207077. This is running at 1080p, low crowd density, mostly medium settings, but with ultra textures, and I made use of FSR2 set to quality, and I got 52 FPS on average. I mean, this is cyber junk we're talking about. The most demanding game ever conceived of by man, specifically made to make GPUs belt. So 52 FPS on average is pretty freaking awesome. Usually on cheap GPUs, I have to turn off reflections and lower the most of the, the settings to get above 50 FPS, and definitely not with ultra textures. Speaking of which, look how much of a difference those ultra textures make. This one setting alone makes games look just awesome. And this is definitely a game that I want to look good when I play it. I mean, it's a great looking game. It looks good even at low settings, but I'd rather take an FPS hit and get it looking like this rather than play at low settings, even if I could get like 75 FPS or whatever. The FSR 2 does help out the FPS quite a bit without impacting the visuals too much. You, you can notice that it's on, but you can easily ignore it. It's, it's barely there. This is performing much better than it has any right to at this price. <laughs> Speaking of the price, 70 bucks. 70 freaking bucks for a brand new RX 580. I know there will be some of you that scoff at the fact that this isn't a real RX 580, or that AMD is trying to be sneaky by selling this RX 580 2048 SP as a real R RX 580. But in my test, this performed exactly like my real MSI RX 580. Literally the exact same average FPS, and the 2048 SP actually got better 1% lows than my MSI RX 580. It's a legit 8 gigabyte GPU with the performance you'd expect from an RX 580. And I just keep coming back to the price. $70, brand new. You can't argue with that value. In this world of overpriced GPUs and the fact that Nvidia and AMD are all but ignoring the budget end of the GPU spectrum, I think that this, this cheap Chinese AliExpress RX 580 2048 SP is an amazing choice for a budget gaming PC. If this were like a 4 gigabyte version of the GPU, then yeah, I might say that you'd regret buying this in like a year or two. But the, the 8 gigabyte RX 580 definitely still has some life left in it. I'm gonna give this a big thumbs up with a TechDweeb certificate of Chinese goodbye happy time and a bonus budding artist trophy because they gave me a paintbrush that I could use to make my next masterpiece. 
And that brings us to the end. Uh, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, what do you think of this thing? Do you agree that it's an amazing deal? Are you one of those who have issues with AMD calling this an RX 580? What would you have called it? Or do you have any other amazing GPU deals that you could suggest for us or that you'd like me to check out? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you down there. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video or don't if you didn't. Stop by my Discord server, link below. If you do that sort of thing, we got a good bunch of tech weebs over there to nerd out with. That's it for me. I'm Tech Dweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.